Hey there, Jenny here. I thought I could teach the Avatar ninja skills because I'm all dressed in black. Legend of Korra, episode 6 and 7. Oh my god, we're already halfway through the season. How fast was that? Not as fast as when Sherlock airs because Sherlock goes by like this, three episodes in like a week and a half, and I'm just like, what? Are you gonna make me wait another two years? Today, we're talking about Old Wounds, episode 6, and the original Airbenders, episode 7. Episode 6, we're still in that Metal Clan city, which name I don't know, something with S. Again, 10,000 times, it's the safest city in the world. Please. So here's on the way to get you, Cora, and you have no clue. We finally get to understand how Lin got her badass scars, even though it was a slight tragic family backstory. And we get to see a little flashback with Toph, which I was super excited about, and we get to see Suyin, who's apparently called Sue, which sounds very American to me because, you know, like, Sue. But, um, we get to see their relationship as teenagers slash, you know, younger versions of themselves. So, Sue, typical rebel, typical girl with not a lot of limits set to her, goes, basically just goes bonkers and just you know, mixes it with the triad and it goes and steals stuff. And one day, Lynn catches her and her mom, Toph, is being sneaky, sneaky, sneaky and covers it up and destroys the rest report. And apparently that's also the reason why Lynn is so upset because Toph was so guilt-ridden that she decided to step back the year after and she blames her little sister. Uh, for destroying her mom's career. Cora learns metal bending. That was actually something which I didn't know was that um, only one in a hundred earthbenders apparently can learn metal bending or have the ability to learn metal bending and Cora, being the avatar naturally can do everything and Bolin, um, you could tell immediately that Bolin has already tried it and his reluctance uh, was from the fact that he probably failed the first time he tried or the first few times he tried and yeah so hopefully Bolin will also become a metal bender that would be super cool it was so hilarious when Lin um, shot back the acupuncture needles and the therapist had needles all over his head that was pretty those looked dangerous those looked really dangerous uh, episode 6 didn't have like a lot of action well there was the sibling fight going on but you know it was, I think in my opinion, it was kind of resolved in a very cliche way, Opal being the neutral party, well, the neutral, the airbending party here, it was like, hey, what are you guys doing? You're siblings. And then it was just kind of sped up and we just jumped to the point where Lin is apparently all zen with everything, like literally, just like, zen. Like, whoa, who are you, lady? And she shakes hands with her sisters and everything is rosy and happy and, yeah. And then there's Zaheer and his crew, and they basically just steal a car and ride out of Republic City like smooth gangsters. And I have no idea what kind of skills he has. I have no idea why. Like, obviously he wants to kill the president and he wants to kill or kidnap Korra. No idea why. No idea why. And he can locate Korra with his weird spiritual skills, meditating skills. How does that work, guys? How does that work? That kind of freaks me out. Can you just locate her wherever she is? Why? What? Oh, what? Uh, what? Episode 7, we finally see Tenzin and how he's training the new airbenders. And Tenzin is basically going through the exact same troubles that he had while training Korra. And I don't know whether I should see it as, you know, so ingrained in Tenzin's character that it's like a good story arc, or whether it's kind of like a repetition. He doesn't really know how to handle the new airbenders. He doesn't really know how to treat them, how to motivate them. The airbenders, you know, they're kind of demotivated because either Tenzin's super boring or Tenzin was super strict because he listened to Boomy's advice. A uh, funny scene was when he was, um, I guess, telegraphing, radioing, how do you even call that? You know, phoning Korra, and Korra was like, yeah, just manipulate him. And then Tenzin was, oh, you're turning into a wise avatar. What? I, I, I just had to lull a little bit at that, like, oh yeah, manipulate your friend. Oh, that's wise advice. Janora, like I already said, finally realizes that she is a bamf, and she wants her tattoos because she wants to get her badass on. The air bisons, oh, so cute. 
the baby air bus is so cute. I had a really girly moment there. Um, I, they kind of remind me of Pokemon, I don't know why, but especially the ba baby air bisons. They were like rolling around and in the grass and it just reminded me a lot of Pokemon. Um, so apparently there's this crew of earthbenders who are like bison stealers and they sell it to the earth queen. The earth queen is moving down on my books. She's like the Cruella de Vil of that world. She wants to eat the meat, eat bison steak. Like why would you want to do that? And then the guy, did you see what he was wearing? He was wearing this baby bison fur. And apparently the earth queen also ate Bosco. Not okay, girl, not okay. Mila's just a devilish little twerk. When he was trading the air airbenders and he was like, look to your right, look to your left. What are you guys want to survive the day? I was cracking up. I was just cracking up. So the episode is just typically a character development episode. Tenzin learns his lesson that Janora has grown up. Janora realizes that, you know, she is a powerful airbender. All the other airbenders realize that they can harness the power and what it actually means kind of to be an airbender. Like it's the first step. It's, I'm not saying that they grew to level 100, but you know, it's the first step in the right direction. Um, and then Boomy uh, finally accepts that he is part of the air nomad culture, being a son of Aang, but also being a non-bender for the majority of his life. Yeah, so that was all nice. That was just a really heartwarming episode. One thing that uh, came up, which we can theorize a little bit about, is that Kaya, um, you know, Bumi and Tenzin's sister appears and she tells Bumi about Zaheer and how he stole uh, Guru Lahima's pendant, which means I think my theory is that Guru Lahima will have a greater role in this story because, you know, it's one thing to be just mentioned casually as a guru who, I don't know, seems very spiritual, very inspiring to Zaheer, but for her to specifically mention it again to Tenzin, I think that means something. I don't know what. I literally have no idea where this series is going this time, which I really like. I, I mean, obviously there's gonna be a confrontation between Zaheer and Korra at some point, but I just really, really don't know any of the motives and I really can't guess any of the motives. All I can think about is betrayal, but I feel like Zaheer would be someone who's above betrayal, who, th who would think that he's working for a greater cause. And then uh, the Earth Queen, I think is just making a really nice secondary villain kind of right there, just undermining all the characters and what they're doing. But why would Zaheer want to kill the president as well? I just, I just really don't know. I just don't know. Um, Varric and his magnet suits, I think that's gonna come into play because magnets, metal benders, <laughs> yeah. And what else? Yeah, I think that's it so far. Um, I'm super excited on how the second half of this book is gonna go. Loving it, as always. And yeah, what about you? What are your theories? Tell me about them. We will discuss down below. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.